Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. And in this video, we're looking at a mid-size GMT from Grand Seiko with the SBGE 255. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldassar.com as an authorized dealer. So in this video, deep dive in this timepiece, final points of consideration at the end, but also throughout the video, if you have further questions, check out the link in the description down below to the product page where you can learn more and purchase the watch. But without further ado, let's jump into the video, take a closer look at this watch. The spring drive movement not only is the crown jewel of Grand Seiko's trailblazing engineering tech, further it represents an unprecedented feat in the world of watchmaking. Combining the endless power supply that comes with a mechanical watch through a winding mainspring, while counteracting the battle of friction with its high accuracy only made possible through quartz technology. The quest towards this new frontier began all the way back in the 1970s, experiencing many ups and downs over the years of this pursuit. Over 20 years later, Grand Seiko was finally able to develop a working prototype to be presented to the public, making its official appearance at the 1999 Baselworld. In the years since, the spring drive has become a watchmaking phenomenon that has appealed for both its engineering and romantic qualities, now spanning a variety of calibers in several formats. And in this video, we look at one of the most impressive executions of the spring drive realized in a watch known as the SLGA-021 Lake Sua Before Dawn. Now, unlike many brands, Grand Seiko is one where I feel it is more appropriate to begin with the calibers given its engineering excellence. Now, spring drive calibers, as mentioned, now extend to several different takes of the key principles, as well as different levels of complexity. Their more common yet still exceptional caliber, the 9R65, serves as the important entry point for the automatic wound spring drives, finding itself in dozens of different styles over the years. However, recently, Grand Seiko has unveiled a new lineup of auto automatically winding spring drives, with one of them on display here, known formally as the 9R A2. Although we can't go through a complete explanation, I'll have a link in the description down below on how the spring drive works in full detail, it is important to remember the basic principle for the spring drive in order to appreciate it. In essence, the spring drive uses mechanical power as a reserve of energy with the help of a mainspring, or in this case, mainsprings. However, with the help of a freely rotating wheel known as a glide wheel at the farthest end of the gear train, it is able to create a small electrical charge with the help of its magnet at its axis in close proximity of copper wire that sends a signal to an integrated circuit in quartz oscillator and then sends an electromagnetic pulse back with the help of that copper wire again, acting as a frictionless brake to the glide wheel that rotates in a single direction eight times a second, creating that effortless sweep you will see on the front of the watch with the second hand. The 9R A2 goes one step further though, now having further temperature compensation tests being run by an integrated circuit, enabling this caliber to be twice as accurate as a standard spring drive, quoted to run at plus or minus 10 seconds per month, a metric it typically greatly outperforms. In addition, thanks to its dual size barrel system that aid in winding reserve and efficiency, the 9R A2 has a staggering power reserve of five days or 100 120 hours. Beyond its engineering, the movement also looks the part, featuring anglage on the bridge edges and also on those internal and external points of angles for that rotor. The sinks for the screws, some of them being blued, are all elevated with a polished perimeter along with the exposed holes for showcasing its jewels. And the power reserve indication in this instance is going to be visible on the movement itself, assisting in utility, as well as showcasing a stunning faceted track, topping off a movement that is a triumph of watchmaking. The other key yet common attribute from Grand Seiko, a apart from their movements, that leads their acclaimed reputation is unquestionably their dials. As the name suggests, this dial that resides underneath the sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating pulls directly from a body of water in close proximity to their Shinshu watch studio known as Lake Sua. The lake is associated with different watches from the brand at this point, with this piece representing a stainless steel case and emulates the look of the dark and ripple surface of the lake before the incandescence of the sun rises from the horizon. Depending on the angle, this dial can be very unassuming, yet as is often the case with Grand Seiko, the dial truly shines the further you investigate. The dial has a strong glass-like reflective surface and a vivid dark blue navy that shows its glossy nature at an angle in sequence revealing the calm break of the waves offering further depth and scenery to the rest of the dial elements. Along its outskirts is a step minute track setting the perimeter around some of the best applied indices Grand Seiko has to offer, showcasing finely faceted surfaces along with a central 
single linear channel that is matte finish inside. The handset is also razor sharp and neatly faceted with the hour hand repeating the relative design from the hour indices. At three, the date window follows the blend of faceting, polishing, and matte finishes while allowing a clear view of the date disc lying underneath. And at 12, an applied GS signature rests over the brand's printed word mark featuring only spring drive and five days at six. Shifting to the case and wear, the Lake Sua measures in with a 40 millimeter diameter, 11.8 millimeter thickness, and a 47.9 millimeter lug to lug length. Grand Seiko cases have their fair share of variety with this serving as a nice middle of the road offering coming in a versatile set of dimensions that are likely to work well in all but the largest and smallest of wrists. The end length of the bracelet does add to the theoretical lug to lug, making it wear closer to a 41 if you are wearing it on the bracelet, but then wearing very true to size, if not slightly smaller when you have it on a strap. The bracelet meets the case at 22 millimeter lugs and does not taper to an extreme degree, meeting at a two button deployant clasp signed with the GS logo featuring screwed in links, including half lengths, which should aid in helping get a better fit, but there is no on the fly adjustment. The rest of the case follows the format of many other Grand Seiko models that came before it, demonstrating clean Zerasu polishing for distortion free reflection, while also highlighting a wide array of brushed and polished angles. A slender bezel is stepped, vertically brushed on top, and polished along its sides, pairing well with the long thick bevels traveling the length of the case sides. At three, a screw down crown works in tandem with the screw down exhibition case back and securing this model's excellent 100 meters of water resistance while also sporting the engraved GS signature. But now to unpack when looking at this SLGA 021 Lake Sua edition. So this is a watch that I was enamored by when I first saw it and it is a beautiful watch to look at. Now some of the considerations here I would have would be with the bracelet primarily and this will come down to whether you need perfect on the fly adjustment if you're somebody of that sort. And then with that male end link that could make this watch wear a little bit larger than maybe some are uh, hoping for or wanting. But now shifting into the pros, this is a watch that I feel is one of the best positioned if you're looking for that cream of the crop premium offering from Grand Seiko. The movement is simply spectacular, both the specifications, the technology, and also taking it to the next level with the spring drive on the inside here. The finishing throughout the movement to the case to the dial is all exceptional for its price range. The added power reserve indicator on the back is a nice value add for many that maybe aren't as big of a fan on the front of the dial, which I have kind of grown to appreciate it on the front, but I can understand some maybe not getting on board with that and maybe being a distraction to the purity that this dial represents. The dial, when speaking of that, has this just striking subtlety about it. At certain vantage points, it doesn't look as if there's anything going on in the dial, but at others, it is a true feast for the eyes. And then 100 meters of water resistance, this really works that middle ground of being an everyday watch. And if you're someone that's just looking for a do-it-all watch and looking really not only what Grand Seiko has to offer, but what Japan has to offer for this price segment with the technology, the finishing, and really a story to tell with the dial, this is is as really good as it gets. But all right, guys, that's all we have for this video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon, really do appreciate that. Also, if you're in the market for this watch, it is available on our website, teddybaldeser.com. We're an authorized dealer of Grand Seiko. Quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. Also, how we're able to fund all of our productions is through selling watches on our site. So if you are in the market for a watch, we'd love to have your business. It allows us to keep doing what we're doing. We love what we do. Guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.